Good afternoon, everybody. Um, first, I'd like to thank the organisers for asking me to come to spare a few moments and give an address um, towards all you this time in the afternoon. Um, basically, since um, you just mentioned earlier about the celebration of the years to part, it was passed by. Perhaps I can add more salt to the wound by suggesting that I'm celebrating this year 50 years in the shipping industry. I suppose in ordinary terms that's half a century. And uh, I think it's more than a quarter of a century that I've been involved with the environmental issues since one of the most basic forms of my overall business is salvage which involves emergency response. So basically the things which you hear about as accidents and upheavals and horror problems are basically uh, is what we have to face every day. I don't think uh, I can go anything further, make anything further without first we have first mention uh, my respect, my and the fact that he's always built up an enthusiasm for his zest for life for the Mitsumit Satos, who happen to be the real brainchild of all these activities which the environmental associations have been involved with over many years. I don't think I've ever come across anybody who's been so meticulous, so demanding, and has success for life. In fact, in a summary, I think Midri being the one who literally helped and contributed towards George Givanos in forming the environmental associations, he complies with what I call the three P's. Patience, perseverance, and passion. And he has all of those. And in fact, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think the environmental associations, the way we know them today, whether it be Helm Leper or Sai Leper or Nam Leper, whatever, would we exist without this endless and continued hard work carried out by this individual, who always happens to be a very good friend and who I have very high regard for. Now, I won't go into too much detail, but I just want to mention a few things peripheral about the shipping industry and the issues which I think we're facing with these environmental issues. First of all, let me quote uh, uh, Mr. Mitropoulos, who used to be the, was the IMO Secretary General a few years ago. He mentioned that we all know, that, of course, that the shipping is uh, existing, we actually confronts or absorbs or helps for the over in excess of 90% of all transport. But I think Mr. Mitropoulos put it even more elegantly. He mentioned that basically, that without shipping, half the world would starve, and the other half of the population would freeze. And that's basically, ladies and gentlemen, the, 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 the bit of track facts. Now the issue here is that we need the form of transport, shipping being the main form of transport, but by, at the same time, we have to maintain it with a certain element of or diligence, and as uh, Christiane mentioned earlier, I love that word, by the way, being proactive, and basically, last but not least, to be transparent. Now, transparency is a situation which I think, um, I don't want to dwell on too long, but it's something which actually is very close to my conscience. I know that further on this afternoon, that somebody's going to mention the issues as an example now about the scrubbers. Well, the last time I gave a presentation about the scrubbers was in Copenhagen about the bunker issue. So the bunker was about the conference, basically. And at that time, I thought I'd make a PowerPoint presentation, which I do from time to time. And I put up on the screen a picture of Bloody Mary. You know, the drink we have in the late afternoon in the summertime, and it was a nice, decent drink with a lot of spice and the celery. But the Bloody Mary's got two ingredients, basically. Vodka and tomato juice. The next slide which I presented was the scrubbers. And I said, ladies and gentlemen, the scrubbers also has two main ingredients. Ignorance and hypocrisy. I repeat, ignorance and hypocrisy. Now, the reason why I mention this is not because I want to be confrontational, but basically, I'm referring back to the element which I mentioned uh, before about the element of honesty and being transparent. What on earth are we supposed to be doing by trying to reduce the sulfur in fuel from 3.5% to 0.5% to 
when we have these contraptions called scrubbers, which are taking the sulfur out of the atmosphere, the air, and dumping it into the water. I don't know about you, but I find that a bit illogical. I think to add more salt to the wound, in the last few months, six months, whatever, you find that most ports around the world have prohibited the use of scrubbers in their ports. Now, two plus eight equals four, and two minus two equals zero. There must be a reason for the ports to be hesitant in allowing the operation of use of scrubbers in their ports. And of course, the other situation, which is, I won't go into in detail, which is a high technical problem, is the collateral damage in terms of actually using the scrubbers, especially if they're retrofitted on, on ships which already exist. I mean, the whole technical issues, the whole can of worms, which perhaps you may have some other venue or somewhere else, but can you hear about that? It's been a horror story. Um, where do I go from here? Well, basically, we have to still have to regard the fact that in shipping, shipping over the years has not carried out the right lobbying, whereby a lot of people been left with a connotation that uh, shipping can be just pirates. In fact, if you go to a few villages in the central part of Greece and you refer to the word shipping to a young kid of eight, nine years old, when you hear the word shipping, you'll remember the fact that in the summertime you took a postal, a, a coastal thing, went from Piraeus to Aegina for, for a trip, for a day trip or a holiday. And then thereafter, you think shipping is all about the guy called as we see in Greek, Lafikopiratis, the guy with a patch on his eye. And the piracy he doesn't know that the shipping is a vast industry which is in a position to feed a lot of people here, give them a tremendous amount of employment, give them activity, increase the whole well-being of this country, and yet look at the ignorance around us where the people who are not in the, the ports of Lake Pioneers have got any idea about the importance of shipping and the fact that Greek shipping in particular happens to be 50% of the European of the capacity in the European countries and 20% worldwide. Now, the reason why I mentioned the element of coming back to honesty is the lobby, because basically, let's take the airline business. The airline business, we all fly airlines, so we're user friendly. We don't want to hear about the idea that the airplanes can pollute our atmosphere about 15, 20 times what a ship does. But on the other hand, you don't have any scandalous remarks about the airplanes being a polluted because it doesn't suit us because we get on planes, we go to our, our holiday trips, we go on our business trips so therefore they've, they've window dressed themselves to being politically and basically non-polluted to being correct. Now the other aspect of course is that we have a lot of halabaloo going on now especially with the IMO and the forthcoming regulations which are coming up especially the South African capital 2020, first of January 2020 which is basically around the corner and yet, at the same time, look what the oil companies have done. The oil companies have discreetly and humorously pushed the whole thing onto the shipping industry and said, now go and solve it, go and buy, buy the fuel, put contraps on your ships to make sure you burn less sulfur. Whereas basically, ladies and gentlemen, I would have thought that being the oil industry who produced the oil, they're the ones who have the prerequisite actually producing or making sure that we have a low sulfur, sulfur fuel. Now finally, and I've got Carleen coming next to me, which is a reminder that I have to stop, which I will. I'll give a quote, on, uh, which is an, an American philosopher, and his name is Edmund Land. He's a man who invented the American, the Polaroid camera. And basically, being in Greece, I shouldn't be quoting American philosophers, but for being politically correct, I will just once for the day. He mentioned the following, never undertake a project in life unless it is manifestly important and virtually impossible. On that note, I'd like to thank you much for hearing me. Thank you.